Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. Between 1840 and 1860, the number of American newspapers almost tripled. The United States had twice as many newspapers as Great Britain did, and a third of all broadsheets in the world were published in the United States. With me today to discuss the current state of newspapers are two experts on the topic. Lee Landini Wright, a professor of journalism at Murray State University, and her mother, Ann Landini, professor emeritus of journalism at Murray State. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before the show started, I had this idea that newspapers are becoming endangered species. Now, I base that on the fact that all news is local, right? Mm -hmm. All news is local. The Paducah Sun has dropped its Monday paper. The Mayfield Messenger, a daily, has gone to a tri-weekly. And then the Hickman Courier, apparently the oldest newspaper in Kentucky, publishing under its original name, 1859, merged with two other papers. But you all told me before the show began that uh, newspapers in America really don't have one foot in the grave and the other banana peel yet. Explain that one. That completely came out of nowhere because, again, you look at the Courier Journal uh, back in our day. Uh, they had bureaus all over the state. Mm -hmm. uh, they, had, they had a home edition and a state edition. I don't believe they have a state edition anymore. Uh, the bureaus are all gone. But you say newspapers are in pretty good shape. So please elaborate on that. Well, I think that no one can really say print is dead. I hear that a lot uh, from pundits and others. And, you know, sometimes it's a hard sell with, you know, getting students to major in journalism. But print is not dead. Print is evolving. Print is now going to more and more digital. And so, for instance, here in Kentucky, the Lexington Herald Leader has a 147-year tradition in our state. Recently, they um, have started to do more under, a, under one of their monikers of HL Media, and that's because they're moving more into digital products. For instance, the Herald Leader, um, had the digital side, the Kentucky.com, has up to two million unique visitors to their website a month. Now, what's a unique visitor? That means someone who just visits once. It's not someone who's a repeat visitor. So it's a new person each time. So, you know, they have invested heavily on their digital side. And that's where our growth is coming because, you know, people are now, we're more mobile. And so most of us, a lot of us now read our, our newspapers on our phones. There's a lot of research now out with, say, millennials, that millennials are consuming news. They're actually reading newspapers, but it's not this. It's on their phone. Yes, I'm, I'm aware of that. I, in fact, about... Two months ago, I got a cell phone, and, and I, have, I have the New York Times, and I have the Washington Post on there, and that's pretty much how I do it. But I would much prefer this, mm -hmm. and you can't get this in Mayfield where I live. Uh, my mother-in-law, for years, my birthday in December would get me a, a year subscription to the Courier Journal, and I love doing this, and now you can't. So I guess what you're saying is it's the technologies that change. Yes. Our profoundly. technology is changing, um, and so it's how we're delivering our content. You know, we're, we're moving to a digital platform where the content's being delivered through a website, also now being delivered through social media channels like Facebook and Twitter, Instagram. Um, some newspapers are using Snapchat. New York Times, for instance, has Snapchat. Snapchat, in case you don't know, and I'm getting well, the look that maybe you don't know. <laughs> I've heard of it. <laughs> um, it is a social media platform and it allows you to take like, you know, burst, like photo burst essentially. They're there for X number of time and then they disappear. But you can string those together and make a story. And so you can do like video stories that way. You can do like photo stories that way. You can type in some text, do some fun filters, headlines, etc. It's kind of fun, but it's very visual and that's what it's appealing to the millennials. It is, but I go back to the era when one word was worth a thousand pictures, uh, and that's not the way people are anymore. Uh, I remember years ago when USA Today came mm -hmm. out, which I found just, I was dismayed by this thing. Uh, it was basically printed television. And I remember years ago, a friend of mine who was, a, he was the Western Kentucky Bureau Chief for the Courier Journal, he used to drop by the house and visit, and we would tell war stories. Um, and he said, something happened today I've never seen before. I said, what's that? He said, the Courage Journal had a story on page one that didn't jump. 
The whole story was on page one. And, and that's what I'm concerned about is, is the fact that I loved in-depth stories. Mm -hmm. And I remember Walter Cronkite used to say, well, he wanted to say, but CBS wouldn't let him. Uh, that's the news for today, but consult your local newspaper for more details on what I had to, what I had to talk about. And if you go back to the Courier Journal Forum, that wonderful Sunday section, mm -hmm. and their best writers and photographers were with the magazine. It was in depth. And this is what concerns me. Years ago, I read something that uh, the average newspaper reader only reads nine paragraphs and then gets mm -hmm. bored and mm -hmm. moves on. So we've got an attention span mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is, uh, should we be trying to convince people to, to go in depth or are we going with the flow and just simply re responding to what the consumer wants? You have two different kinds of readers, and this, this has been supported by research over the last 30 years. You have readers that are going to be quick readers, no matter what. They want the headlines, they want the first mm -hmm. couple of paragraphs. That gives them what satisfies them as far as what they need for the news. Then you have other people who want in-depth. And if you will look at newspapers today, many of your metro newspapers are providing both. You may get in the print edition a shorter version of the story. Mm -hmm. And then you will be referred to the website where you might have page after page after page and you have long form journalism. Mm -hmm. And this is going on today. It has been going on for a number of years. That, that's almost like footnoting yes, in a yes, book. Yes, yes, um, That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is all news to me. Uh, this is fascinating because I, I, I being an, an old, this is an old newspaper person, it looked to me like, and again, I base it strictly on the fact you've got subscriptions down mm -hmm, all across mm -hmm, the board. Mm -hmm. You've got papers folding. You've got papers reducing their, their uh, how many days they come out. But yeah, this is, well, I, I'm feeling more encouraged mm -hmm. about it. But the bottom line is, and, and I always tell my students this, those who are interested in journalism, you've still got to have an individual to write mm -hmm. the story exactly. yes. and take the yes. pictures. Yes. That takes the skill, you the You have talent. to tell the story. Exactly. And you have, the content yeah. will, will pull the reader in, yeah. whether the reader is reading ink on paper or is reading on a phone, or on a laptop, or yeah. on a tablet. It's the writing that counts. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, and again, the premise of what the, I thought how this program would go, but being a good journalist, you go where the story takes mm -hmm. you, it was, was the idea that all of this is just completely changing. Uh, but what you all are saying is that it's the format. It's not the content really right. that's changed. Right. And I will confess, in, and I do read the, the New York Times on mm -hmm. my computer or on my phone or the Washington Post, and it is kind of cool that you've got this little video thing and you mm -hmm. push a button and you're, you're reading about some story, the British Prime Minister gives a speech, and you can push that, you mm -hmm. can hear the Prime Minister give the speech, which does add a lot to the, to the story, I confess. Now, the other thing we were talking about before the program began was how young journalists are trained. And you all were telling me there is no such thing as what I used to be, and that is a pure print mm -hmm. journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, at Murray State, back in the day, you had typewriters, <laughs> manual typewriters, <laughs> yeah. and carbon paper, and you typed your stories, and away you went. And now, if, if uh, a student wants to be a journalism major at Murray State or any What's the journalism curriculum like? Now? Okay. Now. <clears throat> Since you're currently in there, currently take it away. Here. Okay. Um, <laughs> and this they, has been evolving it's over been evolving several years. Over yeah. several right. years, because yeah. as the industry changes, we have to be able to adapt to the needs right. of the industry to supply right. newspapers, television stations, radio, online, and whatever else is coming mm -hmm. with students. But the bottom line, like you said, is still storytelling and writing. Mm -hmm. They have to know how to write. They have to know how to story to tell a story. So that part hasn't changed. So our students start out taking um, our contemporary mass media class. It's like a media society survey type class where you learn everything about the different aspects of media. And then in journalism, they come into news writing. We're still doing the inverted pyramid mm -hmm. that we have been doing for like the last, what, 100 years or so? A millennium at least. At least. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, write a lead, write, you know, the story from most important to least important. Same thing, same principle. That has not changed. 
um, AP style, Associated Press mm -hmm. style. For people who don't know what that is, the Associated Press, which is our wire service. I still service, have my style book. They set, you know, like grammar and usage rules for mm -hmm. journalists so that we're all in a uniform, you know, we're very uniform when we have our stories. And, you know, like state names used to be abbreviated and now they're no longer abbreviated. AP style changes with the times, but the basic premise does not. We're still having to teach grammar, style, spelling, mm -hmm. usage. That hasn't changed. At our second level class, it's now changed from the title was advanced news writing until um, this year. We've just gotten it changed to multimedia writing. And this is my very favorite class to teach because this is where I have them writing what we would call print. They also write for online. So there's some differences in the writing style for print and online with like sentence structure. Mm -hmm. You have to be shorter, you have to have, you know, shorter paragraphs, subheads, links. That's where we put in the visuals, those videos like you were talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, we do a little bit, we do some basic for video, like some shot sequencing, um, except we're doing it with iPads. I send the kids out, we have iPads, and we'll go out and send it, you know, to do on, the, on the campus and do like a story on something that's all shot and edited on the iPad. Um, or their phone, if they don't have, if we don't, if they choose to use their phone. Some are Android users and choose to stay with their Androids because they love their Androids. That's okay. I thought um, that was a robot. Android. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, you know, and then they're also, we do, of course, the social media as well, like how to, you know, write posts for Facebook. Now, in engage. my day, now, in my day, social media, that was a bunch of reporters in a bar after, <laughs> after work. Deadline. After exactly. deadline. Exactly. Yes. That was social yes. media. Yes. The other thing, too, is back in my day, journalism, I think to most people, w was newspapers. Mm -hmm. And you had mm -hmm. television. Mm -hmm. Television and journalism. Not that I'm not disparaging TV journalists, but I mean, it was, a, if you were a, if someone said, I'm a journalist, you said, well, you're right. You're right for a magazine or a newspaper. Mm -hmm. That's that's all changed. Your description of, of being prepared for a job. I went to work at the Paducah Sun Democrat in 1976, uh, and all my journalism was at graduate, graduate level. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any, but I like to write. And so Pat Monahan and, and Preston Kennedy said, they made up this uh, story, said, make up a story. So I, and that's how I got hired. I had, the only photographer I'd ever done was with a, with a little Instamatic camera. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, you've got to learn to take pictures. I said, that'd be great. And so you've got to learn to, to process film. I said, that'd be great too. And so it was so rudimentary, and I've, your students probably get a kick out of this, is how you learn to, to well, you know, in a, have you ever processed film? Mm -hmm. Well, you know how you do it. Okay, you had to learn to, to roll, put it on a little mm -hmm. roll. Mm -hmm. So I would sit at my desk with some with the exposed film, close my eyes and do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember doing that. A and that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. And it was, and a lot of it was pretty much on the job training. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'm sure kids would just think how just, prehistoric that was and we had typewriters oh we had we had the Cadillac of typewriters the IBM Selectric mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nothing could possibly improve upon that till these what I call TV typewriters came along word processors mm -hmm. and it's just astonishing I think to those those of us in our geezer who were journalists back in the day all this has changed and so now you're not a print journalism major you're no, a, you're no, a because you have to learn how to tell the story for you know, what would be traditional newspapers, how to tell it for online with a digital first emphasis. Digital first means that, you know, for newspapers, um, you would go out and you would get the story. It goes online immediately. Then you would write a more in-depth story for the paper the next day where you give people more information. Right. You know, but you're having to get it out. The whole thing is immediacy now. And so we've leveled the playing field with TV and radio because now we can get our information out immediately. Right, and, and, and I think that, mm -hmm. that's very important mm -hmm. because- uh, That's exciting. Our, it's it, exciting. It is, it, it absolutely is mm -hmm. because our deadline was, uh, was yep. uh, at 11 o'clock. Paper went down at noon and, and you had to have the story done by 11. And you know, the world is not a respecter of deadlines. And now you think something happened at two o'clock in the afternoon, you won't get it until the next day in no, a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And now uh, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, the advances in technology and uh, uh, the laptops, for example. First time I saw those things was when uh, President Bush came to, to Lone Oak on a campaign mm -hmm. stop. And uh, we were out there covering it with our notepads and little tape recorders. And there was some guy from one of the big national papers. He was sitting under a tree at Whitehaven with this thing in his lap. What is that guy doing? And he was doing his story. And I thought, yeah. what is this? And of course now, and, and with a cell phone, Everybody's a journalist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and the immediacy of, of things. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago when the terrorists bombed one of the King's Cross station in London, mm -hmm. is people had their cell mm -hmm. phones and they were doing this, yeah. mm -hmm. showing it. Mm -hmm. So you actually had live mm -hmm. yeah. coverage right. of, of, a, of a breaking right. news story. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's amazing. I, mm -hmm. I just wonder how those of us my age could adapt to this. We would just be totally at sea on this. Uh, I'm just amazed at, no, I knew I the technology okay. was advanced uh, hugely. Uh, for, well, for example, wi AP wire, wire photos, they were physically photos. Mm -hmm. And we'd have a stack about that tall. And we actually physically file them. Yeah. And when I used to write for the Associated Press and I first wrote for them, I would type up a story and send them unexposed film to Louisville. And now I write for magazines, it's all electronic. Mm -hmm. I swore I'd never have a digital camera, got mm -hmm. one, because th they do perfectly well. Mm -hmm. And what also kind of vexes me is these cell phones, you can take really good pictures mm -hmm. with those. I'm thinking, why have I got my Nikon D80 right. then, you know? Right, uh, right. Well, I mean, it's just like, you know, for my students, we can go out and shoot on the iPads. The quality may not be as good as a studio camera or a really good high quality DSLR, you know, but it's still, you know, it's passable. It you know, is. It, oh, it you is. Can, you know, and, and the thing with the iPads or an iPhone even, you know, if you're, say, covering something, say, like a riot or some type of um, protest, you know, it may not it may not be accessible to have to go and like set up the tripod, you know, mic everything mm -hmm. up, light it all, you know, the, what we would do for standard broadcast TV. If you've got an iPad or a phone, you can just sit there and just, you know, stabilize it and do your package. But you can do, there are enough editing programs on a phone now yeah. that you can quickly edit something saying like iMovie or there are some others. And then you can just quickly upload it and you can just put it out on Facebook just like that or send it out to Twitter or even send it back to your news organization and then they can get it up on their website immediately. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm astonished at that aspect of it, how quick it is. Uh, and then you, you go into book publishing, you've got Kindles. Mm -hmm. And the first time I heard of Kindle, I thought, well, that's what you do to start a fire. <laughs> and one of my friends had it and I said, well, this, I don't like this, as you can't underline. My books, and when, when my son, whenever I check out of this world, uh, my son won't get anything from my books because all of my books are underlined and have notes in them mm -hmm. because they're tools. But you can do you that can on a candle. You can. Yes. She showed me. I said, you can't underline. She says, yes, yes you, can. you can. I said, no, you can't. Yes, you can. I can even oh, annotate. Oh, wow. Right. And it's just all this stuff that you can mm -hmm. do on these mm -hmm. things. And um, it's just all just head spinning. Uh, but then again, I suppose when Gutenberg invented movable type, that was like, yes. wow. Yes. I mean, this yes. is. And you think you've reached the pinnacle of development and you haven't. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine a hundred years from now, people think what mm -hmm. you all were doing was just absolutely, mm -hmm. it, it was like a hammer and chisel mm -hmm. on, on stone compared to that. Um, so to be a, a young reporter, you've got to know all mm -hmm. this stuff. You have to know how to do it all. I mean, you're, where you go may not do everything because like a lot of community papers are, have still not adapted. You know, they're slowly getting to where they're using social media. Mm -hmm. um, most papers now do have some type of social media. The, the one that most papers are using is Facebook because it does have a lot more interaction. You know, readers can give comments. You know, remember the old days of the sun, we had that sound off. Yeah. They would call in and then leave messages and then we'd have somebody Well, now that, that, see, that came after me. We had letters to the editor. Right, letters mm -hmm. to the editor. It's the same concept. It's just with the new technology, mm -hmm. and so we have we can have conversations immediately with our with our audience. Now you can even go live on Facebook from your phone. Right. Or you know you can set up the cameras and do mm -hmm. it that way. And a lot of new news organizations are doing that now, and even community news organizations are doing that, like live from like you know graduation for instance or mm -hmm. live from from the city council, the city meeting, council yes. meeting you know streaming yes. them live and getting mm -hmm. audience to react and then you know you do have to be able to monitor it you know because we don't really want the trolls to take over <laughs> right um, yeah you know but it's that's but that's how you know that's what i'm doing is i'm preparing these students they still have to know how to write they still have to know how to tell a good story they still have to know how to you know have you know fact check and do everything accurately but quickly and concisely but they're able to do it with all these different platforms and they can choose what tells the story the best. Because as you know from reporting at The Sun, oftentimes we were sent out to do stories like say at the fair. Everybody has to do, go do the fair story every year. <coughs> yeah. The goat show. I can't tell you how many goat shows and cattle shows I went to in my years right. at The Sun. Right. You know, 
that gets old after a while in print with really? words. <laughs> but think about it, if you could go in and shoot a video of the cute little four-year-old hugging the neck of the prize-winning pig. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's, that's good, good video. That's it great is. video. It and is. people would engage with that on your site or on yeah. your social media. And so, I mean, it is now, it just gives us another yeah. layer of our storytelling. Um, and like for my capstone students every year, I choose a topic. Now, what's a capstone? Capstone is our final course in our sequence. Uh, and so that's where everything that we've done comes together. Yes. Makes and sense. so it's a multimedia um, website that we do. Mm -hmm. And we take an in-depth, we take a story. Last year we did healthcare, we've done mental health. This past semester we did 100 Days of Trump, which was interesting. Um, but they're able to use all the skills they've learned with all the media, in interactive and multimedia, plus the regular, you know, the old time media like we did in our day. But it all comes together and they're using that to tell the stories. The other thing too that it tickles me is the, are the terms. Yeah. A troll. That's a little guy under a bridge, you know. <laughs> or the little pencil uh, yeah. with the yes. little hair yeah. from a, elementary a, a school. Facebook. I would have, of course, to me, cell phone, that's something maybe a trustee gets in prison, you get a phone in your cell. <laughs> I, 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 you think of these terms, and, 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 and I remember, of course, Carl Harrison, who was a great guy I used to work with, who was executive. Of this. He and I used to talk about terms like this, about what all the, these crazy terms that, that, that come to think that, again, Facebook, Twitter, that's what mm -hmm. birds do. Mm -hmm. So when you send out a tweet, a tweet, yes. yes, and a bird does that yes. too. They tweet, or, or there's Tweety yes. Bird, the, car, the cartoon right. character. Right. But all of these terms mm -hmm. that we elderly people find amusing, and I guess the kids don't. They, we they had think, those too. Remember, lead. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And 30, sometimes spelled L E D E. Dash thirty dash. Right. Dash thirty dash. Yes. 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 And how many times have I had to explain to a student what thirty meant? Right. Mm -hmm. And why sometimes in an old cemetery you might find a tombstone mm -hmm. and it would have thirty on it. Right. Dash Chances 30. are that was someone who had been involved in the newspaper industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, the term. And, and of course, remember you had to learn copy editing. Copy mm -hmm. editing. Symbols. Yes. Or, or, yes. or when you blue pencil something, it means yes. to yes. edit non -reproducible it. Non-reproducible yes. blue pen. Right. Yes. Exactly. And and I remember way back, uh, in fact, they had gone away from this at the Sun Democrat when I was hired, but the, the typewriters had this the endless roll of paper. They yes. glued it together. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was like it just yes. rolled off like toilet paper or yes. something. And I guess maybe some stories were like that. But anyway, but all this has changed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I bet your kids ever heard of carbon paper. Probably not. Right, and they don't use light tables anymore. No. Oh, yes. No. Yes. Yeah. No. Or exacto knives. Or exacto knives. Exactly. Or the, remember the tape that we used to do for the photos? Yes. Put the border yes. tape on the yes. photos? Yes. They yeah. call it the, the, and there was a little red. In fact, I, for the several years, pencils. I had the, uh, the student newspaper here. In fact, one of my best students, Jared Peck, he's with the Herald Leader, mm -hmm. last time mm -hmm. I heard. And another one of my kids with the paper in Birmingham. I've lost track of him. But anyway, the technology. Then, then before I came to the Sun Democrat, they had just changed over from type, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where type was set. And to be a printer, didn't you have to set that type upside down and backwards or something? There was some weird thing where you really had to have the brain to do that. Way back in the mm -hmm. day when they hand set mm -hmm. type. Mm -hmm. And again, and I like, well, for example, one of our favorite vacation spots is Colonial Williamsburg, and mm -hmm. they have a print shop right. mm -hmm. where they actually print the old mm -hmm. way. And it's mm -hmm. like, I think it would do these young journalists good to see just how far yeah. this industry has progressed mm -hmm. or changed since mm -hmm. then. Um, it, but it's just, I'm just, uh, I can't imagine being a rookie reporter mm -hmm. uh, today, somebody like me and, and what, what I had, my skill set, which was basically I could write. And I always told kids though, if you can write, you can be taught because mm -hmm. journalists, I used to tell kids, there, there's English term paper style, mm -hmm. there's history term mm -hmm. paper style, and there's journalism mm -hmm. style. It right. doesn't mean it's wrong. It means, style to me means that's how we do it here. Right. right. And, and, right. and, but I'm glad the old AP, I, I need to get me a new AP style. Yeah, and they come and out now every year, every and there year. are changes. And mm -hmm. one of the new ones is, you know, one that the, the grammar, all of us who are like really hardcore grammar, oh, yeah. just, we can't do this one. But it, the rest of the reason for the change, they're using they as singular. And it's because of the non-binary gender pronouns. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, to be more inclusive. You know, one of my favorite my favorite section of the AP style book was redundancies. Uh, yes. Completely destroyed. Right. Past history. Right. Pre-dawn darkness. And at, that is, you, people use these terms and you hear them all, all, all mm -hmm. the time. Uh, I assume that is still taught. It is yes. still taught, uh, yes. yes. My students, I have a... a 
question on a style quiz about an EF5 tornado completely destroyed and I make up a town. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, oh. And I'm like, how many times mm -hmm. do you hear that? All the time is yeah. right. How about very unique? That's another one. I, that's I, another I, one. I, I like that My one. pet peeve is first annual. First annual. First annual. First that's annual. right. Yes. That's right. Yes. And you see these all the free gift. Now yes. that's my favorite yes. one. Free yeah. gift. Yes. Uh, I used I used to go over these with, with students about funny things like mm -hmm. that in the language. And one student said, "Well, I work at this place. Uh, they do ear piercing, and it says the sign says ears pierced while you wait." <laughs> well, I mean, what do you friends Romans come lend me your ears? I don't know. Right. But all these things about the language, and that's one thing that I hope that you all are still doing a good job we is are. to make we sure are. we that still instill is, the AP style book um, in our copy editing yeah. class. You know, we still drill them on the elements of AP style. We have weekly quizzes. I did, this time I did a game with them. And so we had every Friday, we had AP style Smackdown challenges where they had to know the rule and then apply it. And it was like a game show type thing. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but you know, they have to know that style book because yeah. that is still the industry standard. I mean, it, you know, our industry is evolving and changing every day, but the style book and how we use the language, that is not changing. That's good to know. Do you all teach a, a course in journalism history where these kids can go it's back? It's a graduate, graduate class. Class level class it's graduate now. Level. Yes. I guess yes. it was when I was at Murray. I can't remember. It was for a long time one of our hybrid classes yeah. where undergraduates mm -hmm. and graduates could take it. I but think because it was back of in the day. Uh, new rules that have come down from Southern Association and other right. accrediting mm -hmm. agencies, some classes are designated pure graduate now and mm -hmm. others are pure undergraduate. When well, I took that class back in the last century, Quite literally, uh, it was newspapers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does the class now include the rise of electronic media? I taught it for a long time before I retired. I, I until well, really until about middle middle 2005, 2006, and it covers everything. It covers advertising, public relations, mm -hmm. newspapers, broadcast, and then it brings it up to date. Um, now, how it's approached by each individual instructor right. is going to be a little different, right. but right. The, the textbooks, the basic yeah. textbooks still wow. included all. I think I have mine, so it's called Newspapers in America or yes. something like that. Yes, mm -hmm. that was the standard That's textbook for use. years That's and years. Use, so. And the, it was written uh, the person who wrote it kept just revising the editions and nothing. Well, you do the history books, too, mm -hmm. as time mm -hmm. goes on. So. Mm -hmm. And time has run out completely. Thank you all very much. Thank so you. It goes by fast. So. It, does. it does. My guests today were Ann uh, Landini and her daughter, Lee Landini Wright, of Murray State University, my alma mater. I'm not going to say when I graduated. <laughs> I'm Barry Craig. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next time. Thank you.